Welcome to the Deep Dive, where your shortcut to complex info made fast and clear. And today, yeah, we're diving into a really critical strategic forecast. Absolutely. It covers Europe, Western Russia, and the North Caucasus for uh, August 17th to 26th, 2025. Think of this as decoding a pretty complex weather map for you. Our job is to pull out the key insights from the latest meteorological forecasts. And crucially, we're weaving those insights together with the long-term climate change picture from big players like the IPCC and the WMO. Right, we want you to see not just what's likely to happen, but why it matters in our, well, rapidly changing world. Okay, let's jump in because the main story here is uh, stark, a continent really divided. That's the headline, yeah. For Western, Central, and Southern Europe, the big threat, the highest confidence one, is a major heat wave. And not just any heat wave, we're talking prolonged, widespread, mm. a powerful heat dome. Exactly. It's expected to push temperatures maybe 10, even 15 degrees Celsius above the norm. Wow, that's huge. So places like Spain, Central France, yeah. they could see, what, 40 degrees? Yeah. 40 Potentially, yes. We're talking extreme dangerous heat levels. And it's not just the heat itself, is it? There's this knock-on effect. Right. The heat dome suppresses rain, which leads very quickly to what we call a flash drought. Flash drought. Okay. And what's really interesting, or worrying, is the feedback loop. The dry air stops rain, the ground gets drier, which then makes the air even hotter and drier. So it reinforces itself. A vicious cycle. Precisely. But Okay, well, that's baking one part of Europe. Completely different story over in Western Russia and the North Caucasus. Cooler, unsettled, and looking at heavy organized rain. Which means floods, especially if the ground is already wet from, say, July rains. Exactly. Saturated soils are a big concern there. And yeah. in the North Caucasus, you've got the mountains. Ah, right. Mountains amplify rain. I sure do. So that dramatically increases the risk of landslides, mud flows, mm. and even uh, GLOFs. GLOFs. Glacial lake outburst floods. That sounds terrifying. It is. Melting glaciers create unstable lakes. They can burst suddenly, releasing huge amounts of water and debris. So a totally different set of hazards there. Okay, so we have this stark divide. Extreme heat and drought versus heavy rain and flood risks. But there's another piece here, isn't there? Something about the edges of the heat dome. Yes, that's crucial. While the center of the dome is stable, its edges become a kind of, well, a battleground zone. Think Eastern Alps, Central Europe, the Balkans. A battleground, what happens there? Well, the heat dome acts like a lid. It traps heat and moisture underneath, building up massive amounts of atmospheric energy. Uh, we call it KPE. Convective Available Potential Energy, the fuel for thunderstorms. Exactly. So when that energy eventually breaks through the lid, you don't get lots of small storms. You get fewer, but much, much more severe ones. Okay, so powerful, potentially destructive storms. What kind of impacts are we talking about? We're forecasting things like really large destructive hail. Some studies, you know, show large hail has tripled in places like northern Italy since the 1950s. It's tripled? Wow. Yeah. And also torrential rain from these storms, enough to cause flash floods even overwhelm city drainage systems. Which raises that question you brought up. Mm. Should things like hail still be called secondary perils when they cause billions in damage? It's a valid question, I think. The risks are clearly evolving. And this all connects back to the bigger climate context, right? This isn't just random bad luck. Not at all. Look, Europe is warming incredibly fast, twice the global average rate since the 1980s. That's a hard fact. Twice the global average. So this forecast, it lines up perfectly with what the IPCC and WMO have been projecting. It's human-caused climate change playing out in real time. So less of an anomaly and more of a, a preview. A preview of the emerging baseline for European summers? Unfortunately, yes. More volatile, more extreme. And the impacts. We need to touch on those. Public health is a huge one. Massive. Heat is the deadliest weather hazard in Europe, responsible for, what, over 85% of weather-related deaths in the last 40 years? An event like this could cause thousands of fatalities. Then there's the strain on power grids. Huge AC demand, plus problems cooling power plants. Then agriculture takes a massive hit. Food security issues. And wildfires. Those conditions sound explosive. Absolutely. It's a cascading series of risks stemming from this core weather pattern. Okay, so summing up, Europe in the coming days, really showing us the face of climate change. Mm. A continent split, searing heat, dangerous storms. It's a stark picture. And it really drives home that this isn't just weather anymore. It feels more like a fundamental shift in the climate system itself. Which leaves us with a final thought for you, our listeners. Yeah. 
Thinking beyond just reacting to the latest record-breaking event, what does it mean for you to start proactively planning? Planning for a new reality that's more volatile, sure, but also in many ways becoming increasingly predictable in its extremes.